Hey, welcome back to Gold Scratch. So we're going to have a fun day today. It's uh, Sunday, July 7th. We're at Waters Dino Service again in Springfield, Ontario, and Daryl's in charge. So we got Dave Forrest, my carburetor expert, brought us some carburetors to try. It's my little boy, Michael, from up north in Sault Ste. Marie. We raced together since he's 15 years old. And this engine's for him. This is his birthday present. And he's going to race a Michigan Modified up there. And I've uh, kind of described this engine before. I'm kind of going out in the limb a little bit. If you know this is going to be a race car, this engine could work good in a street car. And I'm going to come back to that, first of all, introduce Daryl. Everybody hey. knows Daryl's in charge. And uh, fun day. And we've got my little girl coming as well. We'll get her in another clip. And it's going to be a family affair. Both my children will be here. So... She wants to be part of this because it's Mike's Mike's engine. So, so the the idea of this engine I've talked about it before is it is a 400 small block. So typically, engines that race up there, quarter mile track, three eight mile track, three tenths of a mile track, uh, the car weighs about 2,500 pounds, and a lot of guys are using solid roller cams going 7,000 RPM. Um, with them uh, and so because I wanted this to be a street engine a streetable engine obviously the difference is the valve covers of course are different because circle track engines are always turning left so you have the breeders on the left side none on the right side so in the corner this in, this car will probably pull about 1g of uh, force and so for that reason the oil pans made that way it's a special oil pan it's a shallow oil pan and it's got a whole bunch of trap doors in it and that keeps the oil under the sump, uh, even in the corner is the idea of it. And it's a shallow pan to get the car down low on the ground. And even with that, uh, we might get his tuning, ch chassis tuning right. He'll have that pan an eighth of an inch off the track and he might even hit the track once in a while with it. But that's the idea of a shallow pan. Unlike most race engines, it's got a hydraulic roller cam, not a flat, not a solid cam, hydraulic roller cam. Not a crazy cam, it's 335, 345, 560 lift on a 110 center line. Uh, and I, I actually dialed this in on center line. Uh, Bill Little did his run this on his computer program and it would make a little more torque if I advanced it to 160, 104 degree center line. I didn't do that because I did check compression, got 800 or eight, about 82 PSI of compression average from 77 to 85, something like that. And if I advance the cam, it's going to increase cranky pressure. I want him to be able to run uh, pump gas without worrying about it. So that's about as far as I want to go. I don't want to increase that compression pressure anymore. So other than that, it's a full Eagle rotating assembly. It's been balanced by Atchison machine and it's got Flowtech 200 cc Heads on it. CNC ported heads. That's what I was trying to think about. Okay. So there are CNC ported heads. These heads will flow, I think, 300 CFM or something like that. So the heads are not going to be the problem. But uh, the way I've got this engine dialed up, you know, we're going to put a 6200 chip in it for Mike when he leaves here. We are going to do the original dyno testing with an HEI $100 Amazon distributor. We get it all done. We're going to install the full MSD system, MSD racing distributor and coil. And Daryl's already got an MSD box on his dyno. And if you ever wondered whether a $1,000 MSD system makes more power than $100 uh, Amazon HEI system, you're going to find out today because we're going to do that for you. So that's kind of it. We're going to, we haven't even made a pull yet. We just got the engine warmed up and we're letting the, kind of the oil settle down a little bit before we make the first pull. And we will have more clips coming up. Thanks for watching Gold Scratch. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you like the content, you got to encourage me too to keep them going by liking and subscribing, sharing, all that stuff. Give me your comments, questions, and if you don't buy my philosophy of engine building, I'm happy to hear about that too.
we're back. Uh, since the first uh, clip, we have done some stuff. We started with, uh, uh, as I said before we came here, where Dave's going to bring us some carburetor. We started with a 650 or 650. Yeah, and it we wasn't, we kind of did that intentionally, pretty much knowing it wouldn't be the best. But, and then we jumped to Dave's 850. Maybe you want to describe the carburetor a little bit. Dave? It's a pro form. 850 carburetor, quick fuel builds these carburetors. They're all billet piece. They're real bulletproof base plate. You're not going to break the base plate. Four corner idle. The jetting in the primary is 78. Jetting in the secondary is 87. It does have a 6.5 power valve. So you don't want it too fat, you know, driving under the corners, what you're going to do. It uses the bigger base plate. It's a one and three quarter base plate. It's got a throttle floor of one and nine sixty, so one point five three seven. The HP design. It's it's a really nice piece. It also has the uh, jet extensions. It's more built for drag racing, but it you'll see benefits coming out of the corner on the track with this car. But it's right on the bottom. It really really works great. Thanks, Dave. It was a little bigger jump than I thought we would make from 650 to 850, but uh, all our numbers look pretty nice, so we're pretty happy. People can tell, tell you what we did about timing and stuff like that and how we got to where, where we are now. So, Well, after the first run, we seen that with the 650 HP. We noticed right off the get-go that it was uh, using 709 CFM, so we knew right away that the 650 was too small. So I just asked Dave to get his 850 and put that on there. And starting out at, I think, 33 degrees timing, which again, we knew it was going to be low, but we always want to make sure we mix your rate first before we start putting time again so we don't melt anything. And we got up to uh, from 30, 32 or 33 to 36, 36, and then from 36 to 38. And it was real happy there. I mean, tons of torque, got a great flat torque curve. So um, we're going to leave it at 38 because I don't want to put any more in because that's we're right on tickling the limit of being a top detonation. So I think it's going to work perfect right there. So. Right now we're uh, going to change the MSD, or not the MSD, the HEI distributor out and put an MSD on it and see if we can gain a little bit more horsepower. I've done a test before years ago and gained 20 horse on a two barrel 360 dive with cast iron heads, cast iron manifold. So we're hoping, I don't know if we're going to see that big of a gain, but uh, I'm quite positive we're going to see a gain with all these targets. Either way, the MSD is staying in uh, on the motor. I just mm -hmm. didn't have the box at home, so Daryl's got a box on his M on his uh, dyno. So I put my HEI distributor in, and we tuned it so far. But uh, Mike has an MSD box in the car, and so we're going to tune it with the MSD box, and that's where it's, it's going to stay in the engine when it goes to race. And uh, just the numbers, five, would we get 524 horsepower, 517 yeah. torque, something like that? 519 foot pounds of torque, 519. 524 horse. So we're almost, you hear my, one of my earlier speeches, if you got more horsepower than torque, you got to, you don't have a street motor anymore. Well, we're just on the verge of that. We are barely, <laughs> we got a little bit more horsepower than torque. And compared to Dave, uh, to Bill's, to run this on his computer program for me, and it predicted 511 torque. Uh, at that cam setting. We got the cam in straight up at 110 degrees. And so it made more torque and you predict a little bit more horsepower uh, at this setting. So we're happy with that. Uh, as I mentioned before, Mike's coming out of the corner with six to one rear end, the gear ratio, uh, 2,500 pound car. So that's 3,000 foot pounds of torque. That's more than a foot pound of torque, neglecting friction losses more than a foot pound of torque per pound of car. So his biggest issue will be managing that throttle so he's not burning rubber all the way down the straightaway. So that's where the driver comes in and we've Mike's driven 700 horsepower motors for me and did just fine with that problem. So Mike, let me give you a chance. I introduced you before. Yeah, I didn't give that's you a my first so, dyno day, a very exciting. Thanks to Daryl, thanks to Dave, and of course, uh -huh. thanks to my dad. A lot of thought and effort has gone into this whole deal and I'll, I'll treat it treat it very well and hopefully we get some checkered flags out of the deal and uh, just uh, thanks to everybody okay no problem, thanks Mike okay Thank we're you. gonna put a sugar in as Daryl said and we'll make another poll see what happens
process a change in the distributor, but we pulled number one spark plug to find number one so we can get that right. Uh, so Daryl pulled the spark plug and put it on his little analyzer there. Let, tell us what you're seeing, Daryl. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> you look at the side electrode or ground electrode, you can see that it's just starting to burn just to the bend. If it starts to go around the bend, you know you have too much timing. So we know that we're 38 degrees is perfect where we want to be. And a lot of guys look at a spark plug and, and don't realize that they're looking at the wrong spot for the fuel mixture. You look way down in the very bottom where the porcelain meets the steel, where it starts to bell out. You can see it's, there's just a slight bit of tan in there. So it's it's on the verge of too lean, but I like to see like a cardboard color in there. So we may fatten it up a little bit once we get the multi-spark ignition in it and see what it does. But as of right now, it's right on the borderline of safe. Oh, we want to be safe. I want Mike to be able to run on pump gas, so uh, that's why we're tuning the engine the way we are tuning it. I could have put more compression in it, uh, but uh, we're kind of at the limit. I think I said in the previous FIP 82 foot pound or PSI of compression, it's 182 PSI. Get that right? I'm sure somebody's going to notice that. 182, which is my, you heard my speech before, I usually say around 180 is the maximum. For pump gas so we're right on the number and that's why i don't want to advance the cam anymore and put more compression in it okay let's see what happens next let change the distributor so pull number one spark plug hit the cap off so we know when the rotor is pointed at number one at ddc we're in number one we take the distributor out there and put it back in the same place we have to do the fine timing that'll give us a pretty good place to start uh if we get it back so we have to bump the Engine, engine a little bit to get the pointer up to zero. It must be pretty close to zero right now. Where's the where's the mark? One and six. You're looking for. Yeah, we're close. The fingers. Yep. Oh. Oh, uh, you you gotta go around. Yeah. Nope. That's six. That's 180. Of Oh, you should be right there. Now you're past it again. Are you on? No, we're right there. Okay, good. Five eight. So we're TDC, and this distributor is coming out. And so let's just point the new rotor straight ahead at the flow poles, and we won't have to. Yeah. See, on. usually because I use these, I try to get the tower at yes, ninety yes. degrees. That's kind of what I aim for. But if you got the, the cap on this distributor, it doesn't matter anymore, right? It's right. the same thing, right? So, nine sixteenths. Came off. And fall off your carburetor or anything, did it? So do I. No leaks. No that leaks. is the goal. It's always the goal. And you got to do a lot of split stuff if you want to be sure it's not going to leak. They were pulling out straight ahead, right? It's almost straight ahead. Yeah, okay, good enough. Here. Okay, there we go. The distributor is right now. So this was just uh, tune the engine because I didn't have a box at home. So we are going to put the MSD on it, and Mike's going to run it with the MSD with uh, MSD distributor. So he's we go get the other one out of the box today, Mike. So. Okay, Gold's Garage Dino Day today. This is kind of family days because I got this. Mike, he's got the support of his little sister, Marie. This is my little sweet Marie, my baby. And she come all the way from Burlington to see this because it's Mike's engine. So we're going to get a family picture after. And she hears me talking about dinos. She watches my videos. A lot of her friends watch my videos. So now she can see in real life what we do. And so let's enjoy the next one and see what happens. We got the MST distributor in. We're going to see if it helps. Okay, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you for watching Gold Scratch. So there was a whole bunch of stuff we did here. This Mike's race engine, and I've already given kind of my philosophy on how I designed this engine. And they have a saying in racing, when the green flag drops, <laughs> you know the rest of it, right? We'll find out when he gets to the track whether I got it right or not. Uh, but 
uh, one of the other themes was is your hundred dollar HEI distributor. I use one on every engine almost. I buy them at Amazon anywhere from ninety to one hundred and ten dollars, and that's what we had on this engine. We made many many pulls, got the tune where we thought what we wanted it, and then we put an MSD. And I'll let Daryl tell you uh, what happened yeah. after that because it was his idea, right? So yeah, well, I have used it before, like I said earlier in the video, and theory on that on what I'm thinking happened is this engine is very efficient so an MSD it sparks for 20 degrees of crankshaft rotation and uh, multi spark and then once it goes over 3000 rpm it's a hot one hot single spark and if your engine's not very efficient doesn't have good quench whatever the multi spark will and the hot spark will uh, increase the efficiency of the engine because it's burning more of the fuel where I think this engine is actually quite efficient from what we've seen and the MSD didn't really make any difference at all. It actually was a little, about three horsepower less. Now, there's variables in the weather and everything too. There's lots of arguments that, oh, with the weather change, the temperature change, everything. So it didn't make a difference on this one, but I have seen it in the past. So I'm not gonna go one way or the other saying that it didn't work. And, but the, I will say the HEI GM distributor is a very good ignition system because it did work well and it actually did make the most horsepower. So. You can get them on Amazon. Speaking of that, yeah. now it's our best run was 524 horsepower yeah. and 520 torque. I think so, something like that, yeah. Well, so my rule of thumb is always, if you have more horsepower than torque, you don't have a street engine anymore. So we're within the boundaries of limitation, I guess, on that. And close enough that it really doesn't matter. And so this is a pump gas engine, street engine that we're just going to use on the racetrack. And so my carburetor expert, we ended up did a good job. He made his carburetor work good, so I bought it from him. And Mike's going to go home with it. So if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's an E50 Proform, made by Quick Fuel. Proform puts their name on it, but beautiful looking carburetor. Billet base plate, billet metering blocks. Got a nice flow bowls with the glass windows in it. It performed flawless. The fuel curve was beautiful. Mm. Great working carburetor. E50 on a street engine. Yeah, a little big, but... He's going to use it on the racetrack. It is perfect. Everything worked beautiful. Dave's jetting and everything. He changed the emulsion tube stuff, and it's perfect. The fuel curve didn't get fat at the top like most holly carbs do, so it worked really well. Good job. We're pretty happy. Yeah, so my little on. girl come all the way from Burlington to support her brother. Okay, It's a family affair. Both my children are here supporting me, what I do, and supporting her brother. Do you want to say something, sweetheart? Just click and subscribe. There you go. Okay. Thank you. That, she'll probably listen to you more than the listening. So. Mike, you can finish off. Then. Yeah, it's been a few years since I've been racing, and I'm excited to get back. Thanks so much to my dad, Dave, and Daryl, and the whole Gold, Gold's Garage crew that puts this all together. Uh, very excited to get on the racetrack, and hopefully we get some wins for you. Thank you for watching Gold's Garage. Please remember to like and subscribe, as Marie said.